What's going on guys, Killer6 back with the full legendary item guide for all the new DLC for exclusive items. In this video, I'll cover how to get each item, break down how they work, and cover some of the other things that you should be on the lookout for with these items. So let's get right into it. To get these items, you will need the fourth DLC in Borderlands 3, Psycho Krieg, and the Fantastic Fuster Club. Each item in this video will have its own chapter in the video for quick and easy access. So to find each item, you can either look at the description down below and find the timestamp, or just look on the video player at the timeline and you can jump to each thing individually. So with that, let's get right into it. The Septimator Prime drops from Evil Mordecai on the map Castle Crimson. There is no Mayhem level requirement to get this weapon, so you can get it at level 13 or at Mayhem 10, level 65, whatever you like to do. So let's head over there and get the drop. Start by teleporting to Castle Crimson, the Walls Teleporter. From there, take this path along the side, jump across to this area. After that, you can beeline right to these vendors and then you're ready to start your farm. All subsequent farms will start from this spot right here after a save and quit. You can kill Brick and Morty both, or if you just want this drop, you can kill Mordecai, then check your loot and save and quit to speed up the farm. But I like to kill both of them since they can both drop new class mods. Now, I actually managed to get this one on my third run. I do not know what the drop rate is for this item yet. I would speculate probably 10 to 15%, but like all farms in Borderlands 3, this can take some time, so be prepared for that. Now, the stats on the one that I got at Mayhem 10 and level 65 are 27,197 damage, 86% weapon accuracy, a very low 37% handling, reload time is an abysmal 4 seconds flat, fire rate is 6.14 shots per second, and the mag size is 23 on the one that I've got here. It does only consume one ammo per shot. This gun can also spawn with the Annex Prefix, which will give you two shots per trigger pull and will cost you two ammo as well. This gun will always roll with either an underbarrel RPG or an underbarrel shotgun, so be on the lookout for whichever one of those you prefer. The Septimator will always be fire elemental only. The Septimator Prime is a legendary sniper rifle manufactured by Vladoff, and the red text reads, I oft have wished for hell for ease from heaven which is a reference to a poem by William Blake. The Septimator Prime's special ability is that shots from this gun will occasionally cause meteors to fall from the sky, landing on or near nearby enemies. Those meteors are sadly very inaccurate and therefore are not a dependable source of damage. The underbarrel attachment can also trigger this effect regardless of whether it's the RPG or the shotgun. The Septimator Prime is undoubtedly best served on Moe's who can use her bottomless mags tree to maintain ammo since this gun eats ammo like candy. But but like its cousin the Lyuda, even though it tears through ammo, it does so while doing pretty nice damage. The advantage that the Lyuda has is versus larger targets since it has a three shot projectile spread, whereas the Septimator Prime fires a single projectile. Also, the Lyuda can spawn in any element, while the Septimator Prime is always locked to fire, as I stated before. In terms of the anointments that you should be hunting for on this one, consecutive hits or next to mags bonus elemental options are a solid choice on pretty much all the characters. Zane will most likely, however, want the cryo damage while Sentinel's active, or if you're doing a clone build, maybe the critical option or clone swap damage option. The Septimator Prime is a really cool sniper rifle, but the big drawback here is the ammo consumption that plagues all Vladoff snipers. In the hands of a bottomless mags Mozo, though, this gun can be a lot of fun. The lovable rogue drops from Evil Brick on the map Castle Crimson. There is no Mayhem level requirement to get this weapon, so you can get it at level 13 or at Mayhem 10 level 65 or anywhere in between so let's head over there and get this drop now you'll recognize this farm if you saw my previous video about the septimator prime because this is the exact same farming spot now you want to start by teleporting to castle crimson the walls teleporter from there you're going to take the path along the side jump across to this area after that you just beeline right to the vendors and you are ready to start your farm all subsequent farms after save and quit will start from right here by these vending machines. Evil Brick likes to rush you, so when you drop in, focus him immediately and begin doing damage from distance. He does move fairly slow, so if you need to make space between you and him, you can run and gun pretty well in this arena. I recommend killing both Brick and Morty since even though this gun is a dedicated drop from Brick, it can also drop from any enemy in this DLC as a world drop, including Evil Mordecai. Now, I managed to get this on the very first run, but like all all bosses in Borderlands 3, this could take you a while, so be prepared for that. The stats on this one at Mayhem 10 level 65 are 11,603 damage, 73% accuracy, 78% handling, reload time is a nice 2.8 seconds, 
fire rate is 2.89 shots per second and the mag size is 22 on the one that i have right here it does only consume one ammo per shot however there is a double penetrating prefix of this gun as well which will give it a times two multiplier but will also cost two ammo per shot the double penetrating version will absolutely give you the most bang for your buck, pun intended, so be on the lookout for that. The Lovable Rogue will always be shock elemental only. The Lovable Rogue is a legendary assault rifle manufactured by Torg, and the red text reads, I know. The gun's name and this red text are a reference to the scene in Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back when Han Solo, who's the Lovable Rogue, is about to be frozen in carbonite, and Leia tells him that she loves him, to which he responds, the lovable rogue's special ability is that shots from this gun will apply stickies that explode on reload or after a short amount of time. If the stickies kill an enemy, then additional stickies applied will seek out nearby enemies to hit them with another quick burst of splash damage. The lovable rogue is a very capable weapon on any vault hunter, but it is best served on Moe's, who can take advantage of the splash damage this gun has to offer, and Flak with Megavore, who can do some serious damage by just applying stickies all over an enemy and then reloading and getting that crit damage applied to each one of these shots. In terms of annoyments to hunt for in this one, you want consecutive hits or next two mags bonus elemental options. Both are pretty much solid on all characters. Moe's can take advantage of splash damage anointments as well, but with her bottomless mags tree in use, it might make it hard to reload to proc the explosions. You can get around this by simply switching to another gun after applying a bunch of stickies to an enemy and then switching back real quick. That'll make all the stickies explode really quickly. The Lovable Rogue is a fun little Torg assault rifle that allows you to stick enemies while simultaneously damaging them. It's super easy to get this either from Brick or as a world drop in the DLC. So go hunt yourself one, have some fun blowing up everything. Mr. Torg approves. Blood Starved Beast drops from Evil Lilith on the map Castle Crimson. There is no mayhem level requirement to get this weapon so you can get it as low as level 13 or all the way up to Mayhem 10 level 65 or any level in between if you like. This gun only drops from Lilith and cannot world drop elsewhere in this DLC. So let's head over there and get the drop. Start by teleporting to Castle Crimson, the Walls Teleporter. From there, you're going to want to go straight ahead on the map toward the very end. After this, take the jump pad up to the very top, and right here is the save station. All subsequent runs of this farm will start right here after saving and quitting. The Lilith fight features an immunity phase that I absolutely hate. It takes close to 20 seconds, and during this time, you just stand there waiting. So this farm is not going to be fun no matter which character you're playing as just so you know that ahead of time now i actually managed to get this one on just my fifth run but like all bosses in borderlands 3 this could take you a while now i lucked out and got a consecutive hits anointment on this one which is a really good option the one that i'm going to use for this footage that you're going to see here is a mayhem 10 level 65 one with 3848 times two damage 76 percent accuracy 69 percent handling reload time of 2.5 seconds fire rate is 11.58 shots per second and the mag size is 48 on the one that i have here this variant has the adapting prefix so you get two shots for every trigger pull but it also consumes two ammo per shot but you can also get one with no multiplier if you prefer that only consumes one ammo per shot there is however also a times three variant that will shoot three bullets for the cost of two ammo per shot so be on the lookout for that one now this gun can spawn with full auto burst fire or semi-auto firing modes you're going to want full auto as the burst fire version has a very bad delay between shots blood starved beast can can spawn in any element or be non-elemental. The Blood Starved Beast is a very capable weapon for any Vault Hunter. Fadeaway Flak running a 200% damage while Action Skill Active Anoint can wreck everything in sight if you're matching your element properly. Amara with Phase Cast or Action Skill Active depending on your build can have a lot of fun with this gun as well. Like many of the other guns in this DLC, Moe's gets great use out of this one. If you're running Short Fuse, then the amount of bullets that you're going to put on target allows for massive damage. Plus, you know, Bottomless Mags obviously helps out tremendously. Moe's will benefit most from a consecutive hits anointment, in my opinion. Finally, Zane with the Cryo Sentinel Anoint and matching elements can tear enemies up. The Blood Starved Beast is a fun little doll SMG that when combined with the proper element matching and the right anointment can be a fun run and gun tool in any Vault Hunter's arsenal. The prompt critical drops from Evil Lilith on the map Castle Crimson. There is no Mayhem level requirement for this weapon, so you can get it at level 13 or at Mayhem 10 level 65 or any level in between. The gun drops from Lilith, but it can also world drop elsewhere in the DLC and I highly recommend not bothering to farm for Lilith for this thing because the farm's not fun. 
but I'm going to show you where that's located just in case you do want to farm Lilith for it. So we'll head over there and we'll get the drop. So we start by teleporting to Castle Crimson. The wall is teleported from there. You're going to want to go straight ahead to the very end of the map. Take the jump pad up to the top and right there is the save station. All of your runs after this point will start from right here. Now, like I said in the Blood Soaked Beast video, Lilith has an extremely annoying immunity phase. So if you're like me, pull up some YouTube or Netflix on your phone while doing this farm because it's a little on the tedious side. That said, at least Lilith occasionally reminds us about the lava. The lava is rising. I wouldn't bother farming Lilith for this gun, particularly as you can get it from basically any other named enemy in the DLC on a regular basis. So find something a little easier to kill, maybe like one of the Ward Watcher Beta or the Ward Watcher Alpha. Those two both can drop this on a regular basis as well, and they're much easier to deal with. Now, I actually managed to get this on my eighth painful run from Lilith, but like all bosses in Borderlands 3, this could take you a while from this farm, so be aware of that. The stats on this particular one at Mayhem 10 level 65 are 17,889 times 4 damage, 59% accuracy, 56% handling, reload time of 2.2 seconds, fire rate is 2.67 shots per second, and the mag size is only 6 on the one that I've got here. This variant has the double penetrating prefix, so it does consume 2 ammo per shot while delivering 2 bullets per shot, but you can get one with no multi multiplier that only consumes one ammo per shot as well. It will always spawn with sticky and impact firing modes and I highly recommend switching this thing to sticky rounds and I'll tell you why here in just a second. The prompt critical can spawn in any element or be non-elemental. The prompt critical is a legendary pistol manufactured by Torg and the red text reads Exploder Master Master Exploder. This appears to be yet another Tenacious D reference to the song Master Exploder, which you might remember is also the reference for the head explosion sniper rifle. The gun's name, however, appears to be a reference to a type of nuclear reaction. Prompt Critical's special ability is that subsequent stuck gyrojets will combine, increasing the damage and radius of the detonation. And that's why I say you want to keep this thing on sticky mode, because you're going to output a lot of damage with that. The Prompt Critical is one of my new favorite weapons from this DLC, and is a very capable weapon for any of the Vault Hunters. Fadeaway Flak running a 200% damage while action skill active anoint can wreck everything in sight using Megavore to make all the stickies do crit damage. Amara with a phase cast 250% damage or a 200% action skill active anoint, depending on your build, can have a lot of fun with this gun as well. Like many of the other guns in this DLC, however, Moe's will arguably get the most use out of this gun. Splash damage, which increases with subsequent gyro jets and Moe's having the bottomless mags option to basically apply tons of gyro jets. Holy crap, this thing does work on Moe's. Moe's benefits most from consecutive hits anointment for this one as well in my opinion, but the splash damage anoints can be very strong also. Finally, Zane with his Cryo Sentinel Anoint and matching elements is likely his best option as his clone will never ever switch to sticky mode, therefore negating one of the most important parts of this gun. The Prompt Critical is a fun little Torque pistol that can stack up some serious damage and also world drops all over this DLC, so please don't waste too much time farming evil Lilith for it. Get yourself one and try it out, it's a fun gun. The Pat Mark III drops from Sponge Boss Bullet Pants on the map Castle Crimson. There is no Mayhem level requirement to get this weapon, so you can get it at level 13 or at mayhem level 10 level 65 or any level in between so let's head over to there and get this to drop start by teleporting to the castle crimson's walls teleporter from there you want to take the jump pad back toward the start of the map and you're going to take this second left path here you'll know you're going the right way when you see this little eyeball above the pathway at the top of this hill there is a save station from which we will spawn every time after this to do these farming runs. There are ammo chests by the spawn so you can refill a bit on ammo before each run as well. Now quick note, Sponge Boss is tough. Bring a good fire weapon and some ways to keep your health up because he is a quite literal bullet sponge. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. But seriously, this is a tough fight, so be prepared. This footage right here is my Mozerker 5.0 build with a level 65 flipper and using Minesweeper, and it's still challenging to kill him. Now, I actually managed to get this on my very first run, as you can see right here, but like all bosses in Borderlands 3, this could take you a little while to get the drop, so be prepared for that. Sponge Boss is also a decent source for other world drop legendary items from this DLC, as well as cosmetic items. Now the stats on this one at Mayhem 10 level 65 are 9,307 times 2 damage, 62% accuracy, 58% handling, reload time of 1.6 seconds, fire rate is 6.79 shots per second, and the mag size is 22 on the one that I got right here. Now this variant does consume 2 ammo per shot, 
but you can get one with no multiplier that only consumes one ammo per shot if you'd like. The Pat Mark III can spawn in any element or be non-elemental. The Pat Mark III is a legendary SMG manufactured by Tdor, and the red text reads, War breeds war again, which is a modified version of a quote from a character in the game Metro 2033 who said war breeds war. The Pat Mark III special ability is that thrown weapon reloads will spawn with a full magazine. If you throw this on a wall or the ground near an enemy, it will then have a full mag to help you in battle as it turns into a gun with legs and runs around attacking nearby enemies until it runs out of ammo then it'll rush the nearest enemy jump into them exploding for more damage this can lead to some very high damage numbers especially when you do direct hit throws on your reloads the pat mark 3 is a very capable weapon for any vault hunter mose obviously deals exceptional splash damage so throw reloads with tdors have always been exceptional for her but amara with ties that bind can decimate the entire screen with a single throw reload and zane can give a copy of this gun to his clone to help output massive damage. I highly recommend using the entire mag before throw reloading since the special ability of this gun once again is that thrown reloads will have full mags anyhow. In terms of anointments to hunt for on this one, consecutive hits or next two mags bonus elemental options are solid on pretty much every character. A 300 over 90 is great for one shotting most things other than you know big bosses. Most can take advantage of splash damage anointments but with the bottomless mags tree it can be hard to reload throw at times but I still recommend trying to fire off as many shots as possible this gun before doing the throw reload so once again that gives Moe's the advantage. The Pat Mark III is a fun little TD or SMG that allows you to chuck out little guns with legs or smash it right into the face of your enemies. Convergence drops from Dr. Benedict on the map Benediction of Pain. There is no mayhem level requirement to get this weapon so you can get it as low as level 13 or at mayhem 10 level 65 or anywhere in between. This gun can also world drop elsewhere in the DLC. So let's head over there and get this thing to drop. Now sadly there is only one fast travel on this entire map so to get to Dr. Benedict you will need to run all the way through the map. Now along the way you can stop and kill Ward Watcher Beta and Ward Watcher Alpha since this gun can world drop in this DLC you might get it from one of them and then that'll save you the rest of the trip. Once you get to this point on the map you're going to trigger this save station and all subsequent runs for this farm will start right here. There is a ammo machine right beside of you as well. Benedict is a pretty tough fight and he has a shield that's weak to shock and then a standard health bar that's weak to fire so make sure you bring the right gear for the job. Monarchs with proper element matching, flippers and light shows, all of these work really well on him. Now I actually managed to get this one on just my second run, but like all bosses in Borderlands 3, this could take you a while, so just be aware of that. The stats on this one at Mayhem 10 level 65 are 3,184 times 8 damage, 65% accuracy, 68% handling, reload time is pretty slow at 3.5 seconds, fire rate is 2.36 shots per second, and the mag size is 8 on the one that I have here. This variant has the redundant prefix, so it does consume 2 ammo per shot while delivering 2 bullets per shot, but you can get one with no multiplier that will only consume 1 ammo per shot as well. The Convergence can drop with any element or be non-elemental as well. The Convergence is a legendary shotgun manufactured by Hyperion, and the red text reads, At the summit you will find yourselves united. The red text and the gun name are a reference to a story by Flannery O'Connor called Everything That Rises Must Converge. The Convergence's special ability is that shooting an enemy causes a bevy of projectiles to appear in a near circle around the shot enemy, all of which immediately head inward toward the point where you aimed. This gun has some potential, but in its current state it feels a little bit weak. Obviously the more of those projectiles that hit crits, the better it will do, which means on a fadeaway flak with Megavore running maybe like a 200% damage while action skill active annoying this gun could be pretty good. On Moe's with short fuse, this gun can do some pretty okay splash damage, but there are better options. I will be completely and brutally honest, I wouldn't bother using this gun on anybody outside of Flak or Moe's. So like I said, this gun has potential. If we had like a B shield in this game, then this gun would be broke as hell. And no, that is not me advocating for the return of the B shield. I'm just saying. The main problem that this gun suffers from is its base damage and its reload speed. I feel like simply making this gun reload a little bit faster might be enough to do the trick but a bit of a damage buff would be nice as well. Go get you one, try it out for yourself, see what you think. The Blind Sage drops from Loco Mobius on the map, Sapphire's Run. There is no Mayhem level requirement to get this weapon, so you can get it at level 13, or at Mayhem 10 level 65, or any level in between. This gun can also world drop elsewhere in the DLC, so be aware of that. That's going to be important later. 
So let's head over to where you can get this drop. Now, sadly, there is only one fast travel on this entire map. So to get to Loco Mobius, you will need to run the entire length of the map. Once you get to this point on the map, you will trigger this save station and all subsequent runs of this farm will start from right here after saving and quitting. Loco Mobius is a fairly tough fight because he zips around. He doesn't sit still very often, but he is weak to corrosion and he has multiple crit spots on the bottom of each of his train cars. Corrosive Monarch, a corrosive flipper or a corrosive light show will all do really good work on this boss. Now I did 15 runs on Loco Mobius with no drops. So I gave up and moved on to Ward Watcher Beta on Benediction of Pain for a much easier and faster farm. This is where you can find Ward Watcher Beta on the map. And when you trigger this save station right here, this will be where you start every farm. It only took me five runs on Ward Watcher, again on the map Benediction of Pain for me to get a blind sage. Conversely, I also got the blind sage occasionally during my evil brick and evil morty farms and from my sponge boss farm so make sure you check out those videos for those drop locations as well the stats on this one at mayhem 10 level 65 are 7159 times 18 damage 53 percent accuracy 49 percent handling reload time is 2.6 seconds fire rate is 1.32 shots per second and the mag size is 12 on the one i've got here this variant that I got has the binary prefix, so it does consume two ammo per shot while delivering two bullets per shot, allegedly, but you don't actually see bullets come out of this gun. You can get one with no multiplier that only consumes one ammo per shot, and be aware, it does not say that it consumes two ammo per shot on the binary card for this gun, but it does still consume two ammo. The Blind Sage can spawn in any element. It could never be non-elemental. It's always going to have an element and it always rolls with two elements on it because you can switch elemental modes like you can on most Malawan weapons. The Blind Sage is a legendary shotgun manufactured by Malawan and the red text reads, there is more than one sort of prison. This is a quote from Rogue One, a Star Wars story. The character Chirrut Imway. The Blind Sage's special ability is that damaging an enemy applies an echo debuff to the enemy for 8 seconds. Killing an enemy affected by this echo debuff fires out a projectile at nearby enemies. While the special ability has some potential, it just feels kind of flat in its current state. Being a Malawan and requiring charge up to shoot this gun means that you lose some of that debuff time just firing your next shot. The gun itself does okay damage, but there are so many better options for shotguns out there. Also, the damage from the special ability projectile feels extremely underwhelming. From my testing, it seems like the echo debuff doesn't really help at all, making the whole point of this gun kind of moot. If the echo debuff actually made enemies take more damage, or if the debuff projectile actually did better damage itself, then maybe this gun would be worth it. Right now, unless this gun gets some sort of massive buff or some sort of an overhaul on how it works in general, then I would say avoid this gun. But with that said, go get one and try it out for yourself and see what you think. Maybe you'll discover some super secret way to make this gun not feel so bad. That said, maybe on lower mayhem levels, it's pretty good, but at mayhem 10, it is not a good option in my opinion. The rebound only drops from Psycho Reaver on the map Vault Hala. There is no Mayhem level requirement to get this weapon, so you can get it at level 13 or at Mayhem 10 level 65 or any level in between. Again, this drop is only from the Psycho Reaver's loot pool, so you cannot get it anywhere else in this entire DLC. So let's head over there and get the drop. To get to Psycho Reaver, you will need to go to the end of the Vault Hala map. Once you get to this point on the map, you will trigger this save station and all subsequent runs of this farm will start here after saving and quitting. Psycho Reaver is a fairly tough fight, but his head is his weak spot and being flesh, he takes more damage from incendiary weapons. The best tactic that I've discovered for this fight is to utilize the tops of these cells when you first drop in. Staying on top of these will keep him distracted as he tries to bust them up, allowing you to shoot him, then jump over to the next cell. If you fall off the cells, you will be subject to his shock attack, which can absolutely wreck your health. Once he gets down to half health, he moves to the edge of the map and becomes a giant version of himself. His head is still his main critical spot, and he'll do his best to keep you from hitting it by moving his arms in front of it fairly often. While this is happening, he will occasionally hit you with a slam attack and summon in Psycho's riding bullets to deal with. A word of warning about this fight, if you use the Galaxy Brain Mayhem modifier, his head will block you from picking up your loot, and it will also keep you from being able to access the treasure room that follows the fight. So, 
Be sure to reroll your modifiers ahead of time, even though it's tempting to use the Galaxy Brain because of his head being his crit spot. Now, I got a rebound on my very second run of Psycho Reaver, but it did take me another 15 runs after that to get another one, so just be aware that this farm could take a bit. The stats on this one at Mayhem 10, level 65, are 7,795 times 3 damage, 54% accuracy, 59% handling, repair time since it's a COV gun is very slow at 4.3 seconds. Fire rate is 8.09 shots per second and the shots to break aka mag size is 62 on the one that I have here. This variant has the more prefix so it consumes three ammo per shot while delivering three buzz axe projectiles per shot but you can get one with no multiplier that only consumes one ammo per shot or a times two variant that consumes two ammo per shot the rebound can spawn in any element and it can be non-elemental as well the rebound is a legendary assault rifle manufactured by cov and the red text reads measured twice cut twice which i just think is a play on the expression measure twice cut once which is a good approach to most home improvement jobs and i speak from experience on this one the rebound special ability is that it shoots out explosive saw blades similar to krieg's ability from borderlands 2 buzz axe bombardier the rebound will also generate a series of additional explosions around the enemy also if you miss a shot there's a decent chance that missed projectiles will rebound off of a nearby surface and potentially find a target thus the name rebound this makes this a fun weapon on any vault hunter but it's best served on Moe's who can take advantage of the splash damage that this gun has to offer. That said, Flak has a lot of fun with this gun as well because of all the Megavore crit you're going to get. In terms of annoyments to hunt for in this one, consecutive hits or next two mags bonus elemental options are solid on pretty much all the characters. Moe's can take heavy advantage of the splash damage annoyments. Zane is best served using the Sentinel Cryo damage annoyment or the swapping places with Clone for damage annoyment. The rebound is a fun gun that combines Krieg and Gage into one weapon. Bounce your buzz axes off of surfaces and do crazy damage to everything on screen. The only real downside to this weapon is the repair slash reload time. That said, this gun is fun to use. The Major Kong drops only from Psycho Reaver on the map Vault Hala. There is no Mayhem level requirement to get this gun. You can get it at level 13 or all the way up to Mayhem 10, level 65, or any level in between. Again, this drop is only from the Psycho Reaver's loot pool. You cannot get it anywhere else in this DLC. So let's head over there and get this thing to drop. To get to the Psycho Reaver, you will need to go to the end of the map Vault Hala. Once you get to this point on the map, you'll trigger the save station and all subsequent runs of this farm will start from right here after saving and quitting. Psycho Reaver is a pretty tough fight, but his head is his weak spot and being flesh, he takes more damage from incendiary weapons. The best tactic I've discovered in this fight is to utilize the tops of these cells when you first drop in. Staying on top of them will keep him distracted as he tries to bust them up allowing you to shoot him in the face and then jump to the next cell. If you do fall off the cells, you will be subject to a shock attack, which can absolutely just destroy you. Once he gets down to half health, he moves to the edge of the map and becomes a giant version of himself. His head is still his main critical spot at that phase, and he will do his best to keep you from hitting it by moving his arms in front of them fairly often. While this is all happening, he will occasionally hit you with a slam attack and summon in psychos riding on bullets to deal with. And a word of warning about this fight, if you use the Galaxy Brain Mayhem modifier, his head will block you from picking up your loot and also keep you from being able to access the treasure room that follows the fight. So be sure to reroll your modifiers ahead of time. Now I got a Major Kong on my 12th run of the Psycho Reaver, but it did take me another 20 plus runs to get another one. So just be aware that this farm can take some time. The stats on the one that I got here at Mayhem 10 level 65 are 128,276 damage times two, 48% accuracy, 72% hand, Repair time, aka reload time, is very slow at 6 seconds flat. Fire rate is 1.39 shots per second. And the shots to break, aka mag size, is 21 on the one that I have here. The variant has the damned prefix, so it consumes 3 ammo per shot while delivering 2 projectiles per shot but you can get one with no multiplier that only consumes one ammo per shot as well. The Major Kong can spawn in any element and it can also spawn as a non-elemental version. Major Kong is a legendary rocket launcher manufactured by COV and the red text reads, hi there, which is a reference to Stanley Kubrick's film, Dr. Strangelove. Hi there appears on the side of the bomb that Major Kong rides all the way to the ground in this scene. The Kong special ability is that you can charge it to shoot out a powerful rocket that can stick to surfaces or enemies and then explode and send out additional rockets to do more damage. Now this can be used to one-shot bosses, but a word of warning on that. 
Hitting one shots with this thing will leave you exposed to enemies. Using this launcher in general is pretty dangerous, but yes, it technically can one shot bosses. But more often than not, this is what you're actually going to experience. In the time that it takes to set this thing up, I can usually kill the same bosses with my normal favorite gear and be less likely to die in the process. This makes it a hard weapon for any Vault Hunter to get good use out of consistently, but Fadeaway Flak with all of their gun damage perks and splash damage mows will get this thing to work fairly well, but at the end of the day, this launcher will mostly just hit an enemy for a chunk and then spin around them with the extra projectiles, so I'd much rather use a back burner or plague bearer myself. In terms of annoyments to hunt for in this one, obviously with launchers being so strong, most of the time a 300% damage on enemies over 90% health is ideal, but even with that annoyment, I couldn't get this launcher to feel worthwhile on a regular basis. So ultimately, while this launcher with a very good roll can do some decent damage most people are going to find it disappointing and like i said earlier psycho reaver is a tricky fight unless you have exceptional gear to begin with and if you do then getting this drop is going to be a bit of a letdown the faulty star drops from locomobius on the map sapphire's run there is no mayhem level requirement to get this shield so you can get it at level 13 or all the way up to level 65 or any level in between the shield can also world drop elsewhere in this dlc and i would actually recommend farming just about any other named enemy besides locomobius as this thing seems to drop a lot all over the DLC. I would actually recommend farming Evil Brick and Evil Mordecai for this because you can get two sets of drops in this fight and there's a save station and ammo machine right outside the entrance to their arena. So let's head over there and get this thing to drop. You want to start by heading to the bridge teleporter on the map Castle Crimson. Follow this path that I'm showing around the outer edge of this area. Once you get to this point on the map, you will trigger this save station and all subsequent runs of this farm will start right here after saving and quitting. Brick and Morty have a ton of health, so keep that in mind and bring a fire weapon with you. Now, I always start with Mordecai first, but it doesn't really matter which one you kill first. Morty can provide you with a second win if you go into fight for your life by shooting Talon. Brick will also go into a rage mode at times and become immune, which is super annoying. When this happens, just move and save your ammo. So I got this on just my third run from these two guys so pretty decent little farm now the stats on this one at level 65 are 41,891 capacity a six second recharge delay 3,744 recharge rate and it can roll with two perks in addition to the faulty star perk i recommend double nova double amp or double fleet depending on which character you're playing as and what build you're running the annoyment that i got on this one is literally worthless on this shield since activating your action skill to start the effect means that it would cause a nova around whoever attacked you but without an attacker it instead does does nothing. A better anointment would be the one that you saw me get on the drop, which would be an action skill in elemental modifier. The Faulty Star is a legendary shield manufactured by Hyperion, and the red text reads, some infinities are bigger than other infinities. The red text and the shield name are a reference to the fault in our stars, which is a novel and then also made into a major motion picture. The faulty star's special ability is that whenever you are damaged by an enemy, there is a chance for that enemy to get hit by a Nova. The problem is the Nova is weak. Even with getting mayhem scaling, it just doesn't do much. The exception being on Moe's and using a broken interaction with boundary issues, but that's likely to be patched and it's unintentional. Also, since it's just a chance for it to damage enemies and not guaranteed, it's often going to disappoint you by not even procking. And then even worse is the shield's extremely slow recharge delay. The faulty the star in my opinion is just not great if you have to choose between this shield and just about any other shield in the game well, most other shields are going to be at least useful occasionally. The plus ultra drops from Dr. Benedict on the map Benediction of Pain. There is no mayhem level requirement, so you can get this shield at level 13 or at level 65 or any level in between. The shield can also world drop elsewhere in this DLC. So let's head over to Dr. Benedict and get this thing to drop. Start by heading to the only teleporter on the map. You're going to want to head all the way to the end of the map, but be sure to kill both of the ward watchers along the way, ward watcher beta and then ward watcher alpha as both of them can drop this item as well. Once you get to this point on the map, you'll trigger this save station and all subsequent runs of this farm will start from right here after saving and quitting. Benedict is a pretty tough fight for a lot of people, but bring a strong shock weapon and a strong fire weapon with you to make this farm a little bit easier. I actually recommend the Monarch in those elements or a light show or flipper with those elements and a good anointment roll. 
All right, so no luck on the first run. I will keep farming and then I'll see you guys in a second when we get the thing to drop. All right, here we are on run number nine. And yep, there we go. All right, sweet, we finally got this thing. Now the stats on this one at level 65 are 17,334 capacity, 2.9 second recharge delay, 5,980 recharge rate, and it can roll with two perks in addition to the plus ultra perk. I recommend double Nova, double amp, or double fleet, depending on which character you're playing as and what build you're running. The annoyment that I got on this one is only ideal for the additional rolls on this thing and won't actually help with the shield's actual abilities, which we'll cover here in just a second. A better anointment would be your traditional action skill in elemental modifiers or on Zane, the Sentinel active move speed with double fleet rolls to make you super speedy. The plus ultra is a legendary shield manufactured by Pangolin and the red text reads, remember why you started down this path. The red text and the shield name are a reference to My Hero Academia, a popular anime series. The plus ultra special ability is that when you are shot by an enemy, there is a 25% chance for you to absorb that ammo and increase your action skill cooldown for several seconds. Additionally, and probably even more importantly, this shield will double your current health. And yes, that even applies to Iron Bear for all of you Moe's players. This shield is very good. In addition to the ammo absorb, which granted isn't as good as the Transformers 40% chance, this shield does boost your health and give you a bit of bonus cooldown rate, albeit not as much as you would think considering it's supposed to be 30%, but bear in mind that's for several seconds and not 30% of the total cooldown rate. Now this shield is ideal for Moe's, especially in an Iron Bear heavy build, Zane for a speedy clone and drone build, or really any of the characters with the right roles to match your build and play style. This shield is a keeper and I highly recommend it for farming those beautiful double perk rolls. The Flare is a legendary class mod for Moe's that is exclusive to DLC 4. The Flare has has an increased chance to drop from evil mordecai on the map castle crimson or this will have a 25 percent chance to drop from general blister plus on the map castle crimson he is located right here on this map to access the area to farm this boss you will need to do the side quest a good egg which is a mission that you can pick up after you complete the first set of story missions in this dlc the special ability of this class mod is that you gain up to 100 damage while iron bear is active and that decreases as iron bear spins fuel now what that means is even if you spec into auto bear this thing will only work while you yourself are in iron bear so this class mod is basically just limited to whenever you're going to hop into iron bear and you want to do a lot of damage now that said this thing does out damage a lot of the other Moe's class mods that are specific for Iron Bear and it's great against bosses. So if you want to hop into Iron Bear, have this thing on and then go to town on a boss, then switch this class mod off to something else after you hop out of Iron Bear. Because even like I said, even if Auto Bear is active, this thing will no longer do anything at all once you exit Iron Bear. So where would I rate this thing on the list of class mods for Moe's? Well, like I said, it's really good for very situational things, but there are better options that are better all around and honestly i think this thing probably needs a little bit of a rework to be you know worth keeping and most of the roles that you can get on this thing just aren't super good for most most builds so that said i would say this one's worth having but not worth really using on a regular basis the Lucky Hustler is a legendary class mod for Zane, and it is obtainable only in the fourth DLC. The Hustler has an increased chance to drop from Loco Mobius, but that farm sucks. Like all other legendary class mods in DLC 4, this will have a 25% chance to drop from General Blister Plus on the map Castle Crimson. He is located right here on this map. To access the area to farm this boss, you will need to do the side quest, A Good Egg, which is a mission that you can pick up after you complete the first set of story missions in this DLC. The special ability of this class mod is that damaging an enemy with a non-critical hit grants Zane a stacking 25% increased critical hit damage and a 5% chance for a non-critical hit to score a critical hit, which consumes all stacks. This skill stacks five times. And while on paper that sounds like it could be very good and very powerful, in actuality this thing just isn't very good. It kind of just doesn't really work the way that it sounds like it's going to work. So how would I rate the Lucky Hustler amongst all of Zane's other class mods? Well. Like all of Zane's other class mods, this thing is way outshined by the Sea and Dead class mod. That said, this thing has a lot of potential with a little bit of tweak from Gearbox. It's just not doing quite what it's supposed to do. The Muse class mod is a legendary class mod for Amara that is located only in DLC 4. To get this class mod, you can either farm Evil Lilith on the map Castle Crimson, or you can do the side mission A Good Egg and then farm one of the bosses that you find along the way, General Blister Plus located right here. Now, 
general blister boss does have a 25 percent chance to drop any of the four legendary class mods from this dlc and it is weighted more toward the character you're playing as and the cool thing about this class mod is it can roll some stats that you're not probably supposed to be able to get so for example on amara you can actually roll plus three to illuminated fist and that is a single point skill you should only be able to roll one point on this thing and i don't know if that's a bug or if they're just like you know what let's just have some fun and let class mods be crazy but whatever it is you can actually get three points on this thing which will give you 300 percent melee damage and that's really good <laughs> especially if you're using like a face puncher or if you're using like a double bladed linoge for example you can do some serious melee damage with this thing so the special ability of this one is whenever amara damages an enemy with a melee attack she projects a melee damage outward of her attuned element towards another nearby enemy this skill has a short cooldown if you've ever used the amara skill remnant then you kind of have an idea of what this is going to do it just basically is like an orb that goes out it's another enemy that's nearby and does extremely good damage so this is a cool class mod but what makes it so good is the fact that you can roll higher than plus one on illuminated fist so if you can find one that has plus two or plus three in illuminated fist you have hit the jackpot definitely get that thing look for one that has melee damage and action skill damage on it just like the i'm showing you right here and you will wreck everything's face the peregrine class mod is a legendary class mod for flak located in dlc number four this one is obtainable from any boss in the dlc but it has a higher chance to drop from general blister plus on the map castle crimson you do have a 25 percent chance to get it to drop from that enemy now you do need to do the side quest a good egg first so that you can open up the area where he is located uh that said you can also farm this class mod from dr benedict on the map benediction of pain but i would definitely recommend general blister plus instead like i said 25 percent chance to drop there it's a very good chance to get this thing now what does this one do whenever flax rack hit an enemy they drop a grenade this effect has a short cooldown now this thing can be very strong especially if you've retained a fish slap grenade from doing the cartel missions when that was available for a limited time if you kept your level 57 fish slap grenade well kudos because you can equip that thing use this class mod send out a rack into an enemy and it's going to be able to hit for massive amounts of damage you can use any grenade with this and it, what it's going to do is it's going to drop a grenade on that enemy when you hit them with a rack and that can do some pretty good damage now the problem is grenades right now do not scale very well at mayhem 10 so if you're not using a very specific kind of grenade then it's not going to do as well and the reason the fish slap does so good even though it's a 57 grenade is because it does melee damage when it hits enemies and melee damage affects the groundbreaker guardian rank skill and the guardian rank skill groundbreaker does does a lot of damage so if you're not specced all the way down into your guardian ranks to groundbreaker then don't even bother because the peregrine is not going to do that much for you without that combo i hope these item guides were helpful to you if they were then please consider dropping a like on this video and subscribing for more borderlands 3 content thank you guys for watching take care